Doug Lipp has been creating cultures of significance for more than 30 years. He did so for Disney, helping build the first international Disney park in Tokyo. He did so for the US-based Japanese corporation, NEC. And he's been doing it for his clients through keynote speeches, employee workshops, and executive level retreats, helping organizations find greater success in a globally competitive world. Culture always starts at the top of any organization, large or small, public or private, profit, nonprofit, doesn't matter. And a culture of significance means you've got owners, you've got leaders who both care about their employees at a technical level, so they provide training and opportunities, but they also care about their employees and staff at a personal level. Unless you prepare, you're never going to be ready to get the job done. At the beginning of his process, Doug makes time to get to know the company he's working with, studying what they're doing and how they might get better results. Values always exist, it's just a matter of identifying them. Some might be good and some might not be so good. And what I bring to an organization is brutal honesty. The idea is that I bring hope. It's my job as a consultant, as a keynote presenter, to build a bridge from current to future state but also giving ideas as to what their competition's doing, what their employees are doing, what they're not doing. The examples that I will share will turn anyone in the audience into at least a thinker who is pondering new opportunities for change. Walt Disney would come into the park on a regular basis, ride the rides, eat the food, hang out with the cast members, hang out with guests. He would walk the park. And one day, this guy Tom is telling me, Walt, rode the Jungle Cruise and he was a skipper. He said Walt pulled all the skippers off the boat after he rode all seven boats. And Walt mimicked what he observed in each of those seven boats. He is now the skipper, here's the boat. <sighs> another day, another hippo. You were not engaged. Tapping into his decades of experience helping lead change in multinational corporations, Doug helps his clients compete on a global level by acting locally while overcoming the challenges that come from a diverse customer base. And one of the things I learned from many of the leaders I worked with at Disney was that you never go into an interaction with excuses why you can't get something done. And I helped my clients take a step back, put the ego in a locker for a couple of hours, and take a good hard look at our organizations or our own leadership style and realize, you know what, there's always an opportunity to improve. I mentioned earlier how Walt Disney literally would walk the park. He would spend the night at Disneyland. His son-in-law was my CEO when I was in the company. He'd say, yes, Walt would spend the night in the, in the apartment above the fire station. Three or four in the morning, he'd walk down the stairs and talk to the midnight crew sweepers or go into the warehouse and talk to them. He would talk to everybody to get ideas. He was creating a culture of trust. And Walt would take ideas from anybody as long as they worked. Doug helps his clients turn their past challenges into new opportunities by focusing on their core values. My mentor at Disney, a guy named Van France, hired by Walt Disney himself, he was determined to keep the values of Disney alive and well despite the coming and going of leaders. And he would say, well after Walt is gone, we're going to have many leaders. Leaders can come and go, but Walt's values will live on. Hire right, train right, treat right, and any organization can do the kinds of things that I saw happen, not only in my career at Disney, but elsewhere. And what I see a lot of organizations doing mistakenly, and a lot of leaders and owners and managers and supervisors, is they try to be all things to all people. They try to do more with less, which is understandable, but they don't train and keep their staff engaged. They're not empowered, they're not connected, and that person at the top is gonna burn out. We've all seen this happen before. People can't keep that pace. Doug pulls back the curtain and reveals the organizational barriers that get in the way of building a culture of significance while giving clients the tools needed to create innovation and change. I talk to their executives, I talk to customers, and I look for patterns. I look for data patterns, but more importantly, I look for feeling patterns. And I help organizations 
possibly change their approach to their employees or their customers so that yes, they are providing services and products that are supported by data and they're doing it in a way that incorporates feeling that is appreciated. You've got to decide of those balls that you're juggling, which are glass and which are rubber. You drop a rubber ball, you have multiple times to pick it up. You drop a glass ball, which is your values, your health, your relationship with your spouse, your business. You gotta decide. I can't tell you how many times I heard GM say, I got my life back, and they're actually able to juggle more. Doug and Pam, his wife and business partner, learned the magic of Disney early on in their careers and have created a system for helping their clients tap into the secrets that make Disney so successful. Doug is a master storyteller, whether as a keynote speaker, leading C-level executive retreats, creating custom online training, or working directly with your employees. Doug can be the change agent and bridge that drives your organization to the next level of success and beyond. Call or email us to book Doug today.